uh, that he was going to be watching, so I told him I have to behave myself since he's going to be watching this morning. But, uh, no, it's good to be here. Um, this morning is going to be a time of thankfulness, going to be a time of gratitude and rejoicing together with what God's been able to accomplish through uh, the partnership the Lord's allowed us to have these last 12 years. And as I said in Sunday school, we're so thankful for that partnership that the Lord has allowed us to have. Uh, thank you for your faithfulness and prayers and support these last 12 years. It's amazing to believe it's been 12 years. It's been nine years on the field. We got to Brazil in 2012, uh, so we've been on field uh, for nine years now in Sao Paulo. Uh, and when we go back in February, February 15th, pray with us, please pray with us uh, that none of this variant stuff changes anything that's going on. Because right now, we don't. Uh, there's no mandates to get back uh, to where we're going to be going. We're going to be flying out uh, February 15th, and we'll be flying through Colombia. Uh, that's good, the cheapest and fastest way to get where we're going to be going in Brazil. Since all the borders there are open, we'll fly through Colombia, fly to Bogota, Bogota Let to Leticia, and then when we get to Leticia, we'll, uh, uh, Brother John will pick us up there, and then we'll just drive across uh, into Brazil uh, and, and get to the house that way. But pray with us that uh, there's no mandates to date uh, requiring uh, any mandates, uh, tests, or any of that stuff. Uh, but uh, pray that none of that changes, all the borders stay open, so that we're able to make this trip and get, get back on February 15th. Uh, pray with us, please, about that, that with this new variant, that it remains that way. Uh, but this morning, we're going to be in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1. And uh, for those that weren't able to be with us during the Sunday school hour, just a little, little background on where we're at, where we've been. Uh, we've been in Sao Paulo, Brazil uh, for the last nine years when we move in February. We'll be moving to the three frontiers region of South America. It is where Brazil, Colombia, and Peru, where they all meet. There's a point there. If you were to find a map of South America, you'll see that point. And the city that's always, that you'll see is the city of Leticia that's on the Colombian side. Uh, and that's where we're going to be in the city of Tabachinga, right across the street from Colombia, right across the river from Peru, uh, working in a church there in the city of Tabachinga, uh, helping them. Uh, we'll be starting a Bible college there and then working along the rivers in the villages uh, on, on all three sides. Uh, at that point, uh, the Amazon River comes into Brazil from the mountains of Peru and it goes all the way across Brazil. But there in Tabachinga, we can go north, south, east, or west on, on the Amazon or one of its tributaries. We're, we can go all four directions uh, from the city of Tabachinga there. So it's an amazing uh, point. It's an amazing place to be to where we can reach all four, uh, four, four regions uh, or four directions uh, in that region. So pray with us as, as we get going uh, there in that, in that uh, area of Brazil, working on the Brazilian side, but also the Colombian and Peruvian sides as well. First Thessalonians chapter number one, we see here in this book uh, one of the epistles that Paul is writing to the church of Thessalonica. And this church of Thessalonica was a church that he had been able to plant on one of his missionary journeys. And as was the custom of Paul, he would go to a city uh, plant a church, and then he would move on to another city and plant another church and continue moving on. And there were times where he was able to return back to some of these cities and see how the church was going and return to the churches. But sometimes he wasn't able to. And at this point, Paul had not yet been able to return back to Thessalonica. But the testimony of this church of Thessalonica had warmed his heart so much that he wrote this letter back to them. And this morning, it's an amazing testimony that we see from the church of Thessalonica, from where it started to the testimony and the impact that it had. It's amazing to see. And we're going to see some, some, some reasons why this church was able to go from where it started to the impact that it had and what were the, the, the reasons for that. Here in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1, the Bible says in verse number 1, Paul and Silvanus... And Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father, in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which deliver, delivered us from the wrath to come. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity, the freedom, and the liberty, Lord, that we have to come here this morning to open your word and to hear it preached. Lord, we, we're so grateful for uh, all that you've done for us. We thank you for this church. We thank you for the partnership we've been able to have these so many years. Lord, I pray that during this time now that you would speak to our hearts. Lord, you would help us, Lord, to be uh, uh, cognizant of what you have for each and every one of us as we are here sitting underneath your word of God being preached, that we would open our hearts, we would open our minds and be moldable, Lord, be teachable. Lord, help us, Lord, to be encouraged. Help us, the Lord, to be challenged where we need to be challenged. Lord, we thank you for your word. Speak to our hearts. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we were preparing to leave uh, Sao Paulo and say goodbye uh, to New Life Baptist Church there uh, in the neighborhood of Guacuari, uh, back in May, uh, the, uh, the, one of our team members asked if I would preach the final message there. Um, it was Mother's Day evening. Uh, when we were saying goodbye, and uh, he asked if I would preach that evening, and, and I, I, I did. And as I was preaching, I, I understood why he wanted me to preach and why he didn't want to preach, because I was up there preaching, I was crying and, and bubbling, I was doing all, I was, it was horrible. It was the worst preaching I've ever done in my life. It was just absolutely horrible as we were saying goodbye to everybody. And he was out in the audience crying and doing the same thing. So I was like, oh, he wanted me up here preaching and, and crying instead of him up here preaching and crying. But uh, as I was preparing and getting ready, I was asking the Lord what he would have me to preach that evening. The Lord led me to this chapter, to this, to this passage of Scripture. Because as I read this passage of Scripture, it reminded me a lot of, of the church there uh, in, in Guacuri, of how they had uh, grown from from where they would be uh, started in 2018 to where they were at in 2021. It was just amazing to see what God has done. It's not because of the pastor. It's not because of the, the, the church planting team that was there. It's because of God's faithfulness. It's because of God's word, everything that's happening. And us pastors and us, uh, uh, us that are able to, to be pastors and lead and be uh, part of the leadership of churches we just have a wonderful opportunity being able to be a part to see what God is doing in so many different lives of the church. Just to be a part of, of seeing them go from, from asking Jesus to come into their heart to, to growing day by day and week by week and year by year. Just seeing how God's word is doing all the changing and us just being there along for the ride. It's just amazing. It's, a, it's such a wonderful blessing and I thank the Lord so much for the opportunity he gave us to be be there and the testimony of the Thessalonians reminded me of the testimony of the people there in Sao Paulo and as we were preparing to come back for furlough I was asking the Lord what he would have us to to give and preach uh, while we were on furlough and the Lord led me back to this passage of scripture and Paul can't, Paul's point of view is as a church planner, as he was able to plant this church. And I know this isn't our point of view as, as we've come back. And the Lord's laid this on my heart to preach. And uh, we've preached this in almost every church that we've been at that has been supporting us uh, since the beginning. And, and uh, it's from our heart. 
And this is from Paul's heart, but it's from a different point of view. I'm so grateful for the plan God has established in reaching the entire world. He gave us a command, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He's given us all that commission. But with that commission, he gave us a wonderful plan, a way to fulfill that plan. It is called worldwide evangelism. It's called world missions. It's called faith promise missions, grace giving missions. It's with the church that the Lord has established and the missionary and partnering them together to fulfill the great commission. Because the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. That word both means at the same time. How can I be doing all of this at the same time? It's through that partnership that the Lord has established. He's given us a way to fulfill his command. It's amazing. It's amazing. This partnership <coughs> the Lord has established. And as you faithfully fulfill your part of the Great Commission, you have missionaries all over the world fulfilling their part of the Great Commission. And there's no way, there's no way these last nine years being in the country of Brazil, there's no way that we are able to fulfill our part of the Great Commission without Liberty Baptist Church and other churches just like you fulfilling your part. And this morning, we just want to lay our hearts out to you this morning. This morning, we just want to say thank you. And there's no better way that we can say it than how Paul said it here in this chapter in 1 Thessalonians. He says in verse number 2, We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. And he says in verse number 3, Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. And I love this last part. It's not to be in the side of the pastor, in the side of the missionary, in the side of all these other church members, in the side of, uh, of, of your family. It's in the sight of God and our Father. Why do we do what we do? It's not to please the world. It's not to please the pastor. It's not to please the church. It's to please him. But what is it that we do? It's that work of faith. <coughs> it's that labor of love. And it's that patience of hope. Faith, hope, and love. I don't know if any of you like having sayings in your house or in your bathrooms, in your kitchens, in your living rooms. Uh, Sarah, she likes those uh, words, sayings that you can stick to the wall that, don't, that look like they're painted onto the wall. She loves those things. And sometimes you have all these verses in your bathroom or you have them in your bedroom or you have them in your... And faith, hope, and love is one of these sayings that is in all of the in all these houses. They're in churches, and they're they're now you got one. But it's faith, hope, and love. Why is that? Because faith, hope, and love are the three ruling principles of the Christian life. Faith, hope, and love are the three motivations of the Christian life. What motivated you this morning to get out of bed? It was a little cold. It was a little rain and trying to rain or spit on us or whatever it's trying to do out there. What motivated you to get out of bed and come to church this morning? And if you have kids, sex. What motivated you? It's faith, hope, and love. Can I, can I, can I tell you this morning? Even as a missionary and as a spiritual person, a leader, a pastor, a missionary, we didn't want to get out of bed. We want to, didn't want to get all our kids out of bed and all the work that it takes to get everybody ready. What is that that motivates us? It's not, it's faith, hope, and love. And you know, we see here in, the, in this church of the Thessalonians how Paul, he mentions this and He's, we see the results of faith, hope, and love in their lives. He says in verse number 6, And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. The church in Thessalonica was born out of much affliction. It wasn't easy. 
the church to get started there, the people that were there, it was born out of affliction. It was hard. But through faith, hope, and love, this, a church had sprouted out in the little town of Thessalonica. In verse number 7, he continues, And as they were born out of much affliction, so that ye were in samples. That word in samples means examples. Ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Do you realize how large of an area, how many different churches are, is in Macedonia and Achaia? It's a, it's a huge region. Paul went over into this region in Acts chapter 16 after, after seeing the vision come over into Macedonia and help us. And he went to Philippi and he went to all these different places in the Macedonia region. He says, this church of Thessalonica, born out of much affliction through faith, hope, and love, had become an example to all that believe in this region of Macedonia and Achaia. How did it grow? Through faith, hope, and love. Through faith, hope, and love. And then in verse number 8, it goes even further. Look at this. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord. From you, from your church, from your faith, from your hope, from your love, sounded out the word of the Lord in every place. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God were spread abroad. The word of the Lord is being spread abroad from all, these di- from all these different places, to all these different places, from your little place, to every place your faith to God's word is spread abroad. The influence, the impact of this little church of Thessalonica grew out of affliction, and it just impacted the world through faith, Hope and love. So many times, we as missionaries, I'll tell on us missionaries a little bit. When we're on deputation, when we're coming out of college, or when we're starting deputation new, and we started deputation at the age of 27, I think. We were 26 or 27. We were young, young, young guys, young people starting deputation. And as young, we were wanting to be known. We were wanting the more churches that could know us, the more visibility that we could have, the more that would take us on and the shorter deputation would be and the faster we can get to the field. And So what do you do? You want visibility? You you want to go to the big churches. Let's get into the big churches. The more big churches we can get into, the more visibility we can get. And the big churches have all the money and they have all the money and they'll send us all to the, to the, and they'll send us to the mission field. And I, we have some really great larger churches that do support us. But we have, since uh, we've been able to pick up a couple churches that have added us on as partners uh, during this furlough, we have 79 churches that faithfully support us. Our average support is about $60 a month. Can I tell you, 90, close to 90% of the churches that support us are just like Liberty Baptist Church. Just like Liberty Baptist Church. Small town USA. Seriously, it's not a huge town. Serving the Lord. And the impact of these. And Thessalonica was a small town. It wasn't a huge place. But the impact of our small town independent Baptist churches is being felt all over the world. Sometimes we may feel We would like to be maybe a little bit bigger. We would like to make a bigger impact in our city or a bigger impact in our state. And and, 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 and if we are are forward thinkers, if we are wanting to do, and and we have that thought, we want to do more in our our Macedonia and Achaia. But it's being felt. And this morning we want to say thank you, just like Paul said here. We give thanks to God always for you. And this morning, I want it to be personal to each and every one of you, to not just the church as a whole, but you. Thank you. Because the impact is being felt worldwide of your faith, your hope, and your love here in Searcy, Arkansas. 
we want to thank you for your work of faith. Do you remember that day when you asked Jesus to come into your heart? Do you remember that day where you turned to God from idols? That day that you said, I have decided to follow Jesus. That day that you said, I'm going to turn my back on the world. The world can't give me anything. I've tried so long to, to follow the world and to do what the world is saying, but it's just not getting me anywhere. I have decided to follow Jesus. That day where you asked him to come into your heart and he became your savior. That very first day that you started that walk of faith. I want to thank you for your walk of faith. We want to thank you for your work of faith. And faith never doesn't stop that day when we ask Jesus to come into our hearts. Our work, walk of faith doesn't stop. It has just begun, has it not? And you, and you grow and you grow and you go through things that you think, I, there's no way that I can go through this. There's no way that I can do that. There's no way I can step out and, and do this. And, and, and to see these men that are up here this morning leading the church service, and there, there was a point in their, that they said, I, I don't want to do that or I don't think I can do that. But it's through that work, that walk of faith of growing day after day, where you step out and you do things that you never thought that you could do. You step out and, and you participate in something you never thought you could participate in. There's uh, that work and walk of faith. We want to thank you. We want to thank you for your walk of faith. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I love church. Grew up in church. But why is church so important? Why is coming to church so important? Why is it so important to come Sunday morning and Sunday night. Why is it important to come Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night? Is it one time just good enough? Aren't we good after one time? The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. You want your faith to grow? Come to church every time the doors are open. And if you come to church every time the doors are open with your heart open, guess what's going to grow? Your faith. Because every time that word is preached and your heart's open your faith will grow because the bible says faith cometh by hearing hearing by the word of god and i know your pastor preaches the word of god faith cometh by hearing we want to thank you for your work of faith maybe this morning you haven't started your walk of faith yet maybe you're sitting here this morning and you've never truly turned to god from idols. Maybe there's still something that you're trusting in your life to take you to heaven when you die. Maybe there's an act. Maybe there's someone or something that you're trusting to take you to heaven when you die. You haven't fully put Jesus as your Savior. This morning, you can start that walk of faith. This morning, you can start. But he doesn't stop with the work of faith. He says in your labor of love. We want to thank you for your labor of love. That labor of love is so important. Here in Searcy, Arkansas, your labor of love is so important. Why is it important? Because without love, these church doors will close. The only reason the church doors are still open this morning is because there's people here that are still laboring in love. All the ministries, it's a labor of love. All the special events, it's a labor of love. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, it's a labor of love. Our churches are still open because our churches are still laboring in love. The moment our churches stop laboring in love, that's the moment our churches are going to start closing. And the moment our churches start closing is the moment our missionaries have to come off the field. So because of your labor of love, Missionaries all over the field are still able to be there and labor and love there. The moment we stop laboring and love is the moment that we're going to fall. It's the moment that we're going to be, be coming back to the field. We all have to continue laboring in love where God has placed us. That labor of love in regards to your missionaries is, is the correspondence. We were talking before about uh, the time that we were able to uh, chat live. Uh, I think it was through video chat. We were able to video chat live uh, here at the church. You, many of you have said that you enjoyed that. 
And as you enjoyed that, we immensely enjoyed that. It was awesome. I, I was thinking it's, this would be great to do even not during the pandemic times. We would love to do this all the time. Why? Because we actually got to speak to somebody in English. It was amazing. But that's the labor of love, taking the time, taking the, the effort, because it's not easy to get all that technology all together. and, and every, But that effort, that, that, it's a labor of love. And we want to thank you for your labor of love. Each and every one of you, if you, when you respond to a missionary and just say, I'm praying for you, or do you respond to a newsletter, you see a newsletter and you respond and you say, we're praying for you, we're praying for you about this, we're praying for you about that, you don't know what that does in the heart of your missionaries to get a response, just saying, praying for you. It's a labor of love. We want to thank you for that labor of love. And lastly, Paul mentions here, the third motivation, the third ruling principle that we live by, that patience of hope. The Bible says here in verse number 10, he says, and to wait for his son from heaven. What is that patience of hope? It's that patience of hope as we patiently wait for his return. Now, I don't know how patiently we're waiting, but we're waiting for his return. That patience of hope. We want it to be today. I want it to be today. I want to see my Savior face to face. That hope that we have. Isn't it amazing, the hope that we have in the Lord today? We know he's coming back. We know we have eternal life. That hope that we have. The world is going to hell in a handbag. Things are just crazy. And may I say, our government's not the only government that doesn't know what they're doing. It's worldwide. It's worldwide. The Brazilian government, one day, one week they want to open it, the next week they want to close it. One week they want to open it, next week they want to close it. They have no idea what they want to do. It, it's just amazing. They just have no idea. It's just crazy all over the world. But why is it that we can smile? Why is it that, that we can continue to go? Why is it we continue to go forward? Why is it we continue to do what we're doing and continue serving and continue loving and continue going, going, going with a smile on our face? Because it's hope. We have hope. Our hope's not in government. Our hope's not in, in all these different things of the world. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Our hope is in his return. Our hope is in glory. One day, we're going to be with him. I have hope of everlasting life. I have hope of eternal life. I have hope. What is the world searching for today? Why are so many fall into suicide, there's no hope. There's no hope. We have hope. The question we have to ask ourselves, have you passed along the hope that you have with anybody? You probably have family members that are without hope. You have family members that are living without hope. Have you tried to pass it along? And may I say, that's probably the hardest people to pass the hope along to. It's the hardest people to talk to is your own family. Because you want them to like you and still want to talk to you. But, you know, it, I understand it's hard. I have a brother right now who is just, it, it's just very difficult. The, the, the relationship is so strained. The relationship is just because you want to talk to them. You want to try to. And encourage them and, and give them, but he, he just zero, no desire whatsoever to hear any. He's without hope. And his, he can just see it in his face. He just has zero hope. Our neighbors, our coworkers, are we passing this hope along? I'm so glad, I'm so thankful for the hope that we have in Jesus. And this morning, we want to say thank you for that patience of hope. When I think of patience of hope in regards to the church and to the missionary, I think of a missionary coming through on deputation, presenting their field and presenting the burden that the Lord has laid on their hearts, the plan that they have to fulfill that burden, to fulfill what they believe God's called them to do, and the church saying, we're going to partner together with you and we're going to, we're going to uh, make you part of our missions team. And the church uh, starts month by month Sending that check and praying and sending that check and praying and sending that check and praying. 
And as you are fulfilling your part of that great commission, you have hope that the Lord is going to bring the fruit. And may I say this patience of hope is not, I hope we win the lottery. I hope we win the game. This hope is a confidence. It's a strong confidence in. Why can we have confidence in eternal life? Because we've given, been given that promise from God's word. Why do we have hope of his return? We've been given that promise from God's word. Why can we have hope in God bringing the increase, in God uh, seeing souls saved? Because we've been given that promise in God's word. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. God's given us a promise. We have hope, that patience of hope, that partnership. And as a missionary, our one goal is to please him. Our one goal is to bring honor and glory to him. Our one fear is failing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But may I say we're all human, and we all have human thoughts and human tendencies. And my, may I say one of my fears is failing our 79 supporting churches who month in, month out, have that patience of hope in our partnership. As you give, your part of the Great Commission has been fulfilled. You have done what God has called you to do. You have given so someone else can go. Now it's my job to fulfill that other part. And when we fail, that partnership is broken and the Great Commission is not fulfilled. And you have that patience of hope, that confidence that as we invest in this ministry, the Lord is going to bring the increase. As we invest in this ministry, the Lord is going to see souls saved. As we invest in this ministry, the Lord is going to see souls saved. Soul saved. As we invest in this ministry, the Lord is going to see souls saved. That patience of hope. And this morning, we want to thank you for that patience of hope. I am so thankful that God has allowed us to partner with Liberty Baptist Church for all these years. The work of faith, the labor of love, and the patience of hope these last 12 years has made an impact worldwide. We look forward to many more years partnering together. But this morning, I would love to encourage each and every one of you that are sitting here this morning. Maybe there's been a point this year and the last couple years where you're kind of getting tired of being faithful, where you're kind of getting tired of, 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 of living by faith and, and, and the, the, the faith life sometimes can get a little uh, discouraging sometimes. I want you to be encouraged this morning that your work of faith is making a difference. Your labor of love is making a difference. The Bible says, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Sometimes we may not be able to see the results right now, but your love is making an impact worldwide. Just like this church of Thessalonica, it was able to become an example to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. And that the word of God was, was spread far and wide, to every place their faith to God word was spread abroad. Why was it? Faith, hope, and love. Thank you for your faith, hope, and love. And this morning, I want to encourage you to let's keep going. Let's keep serving. Let's keep living by faith. Let's keep laboring in love. And let's keep having that hope. Don't lose hope. And let's pass that hope along. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for these three ruling principles, Lord, that you've laid out in the word of God, not only here in 1 Thessalonians, but also in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Lord, you've given us the three ruling principles, the three motivations of our Christian life. Lord, I pray that we would live by them. I pray, Lord, that you, we would be encouraged this morning that our faith not only makes a difference in our life as we grow, but it makes a difference in the life of those that we're around 
at our church, in our city, the Lord all around the world, the hope and the love. Lord, I pray this morning that if there's one who has not started <clears throat> that walk of faith with you, Lord, they're living this morning and they don't have hope of eternal life. If they were to die this morning, they don't have that confidence that they would go to heaven. Lord, I thank you so much for June 2nd, 1994, that day when I received that hope of eternal life by asking you into my heart. If there's one here this morning that needs to take that step of faith this morning, I pray, Lord, that you would speak to their heart and that they would get that settled before it's eternally too late. Lord, I pray if there's one here this morning that has become discouraged and stopped serving in one area or another, Lord, I pray that you would uh, reinvigorate our love for you, reinvigorate our love for serving you, our love for uh, our community, Lord, and help us to labor in love. Lord, and help us to pass our hope that you've given us through your word to others around us. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Well, thank you for, um, for everybody showing up here today. I know it's going to be an encouragement. Y'all have people to, to show up. It, it is really nice, though, to, to hear from the missionaries. You know, we, we see their names in the hall of the church. We see the prayer card. We see all that, and it's, I mean, we see a picture of y'all, but it's so nice to to actually see the people who's out there, because we can only be at one place one, one time. I mean, I'm right here in Searcy, Arkansas. I can't go to Brazil. I can't go to Italy. If y'all want to send me there, please uh, talk to me after church. But, you know, on Wednesday nights, you got, you got a great opportunity to give an offering to Faith Mission. And to send missionaries and have part of people getting saved all around the world. I mean, we have the Great Commission. We're to go out. And we're to preach people in our town. We're to give them the gospel. We're to go. But we can give our money and we can help the missionaries so that we can, they can go places that we can't. I mean, it is just, it's amazing what y'all do. It is amazing what missionaries do to, to leave their homes, go to a country... I don't know how well y'all knew Brazil before y'all went. But to leave, they left their home, they go to Brazil, and they preach the gospel. That is amazing. We, um, we're going to have a love offering. Our offering boxes, by the way, they're on the wall, the little black boxes. There's one right over there and then one right by Brother Denny. Um, if you want to give them a love offering, just mark the... Market love. Put Brother Bruner. That way the people counting the money in the back, they'll know and they'll make sure they get it. Because traveling's not cheap. I mean, y'all have all, who's filled up their tank within the past week? Raise your hand. Wow, not that many people. Okay, I'm going to talk to y'all what kind of cars y'all drive. It's expensive. They're traveling around. You know, we need to give them an offer and help them out. I want to remind everybody to be back here at 6 o'clock. Brother Jameson, uh, Russ Camp, he's going to be preaching. If y'all haven't got to hear him preach, if you wouldn't hear Wednesday night to hear him preach, I strongly recommend y'all come. He, um, Jacksonville is the college he went to, correct? All right. He had a preacher, um, a teacher, I'm sorry, a teacher that y'all all know, Brother Brooks. So um, I highly recommend y'all come back tonight. Um, if y'all would, though, the love offering, once again, just mark it love or Bruner, that way they know. And shake his hand, thank him. I mean, that's amazing. I don't, I don't know him personally. I don't know his family personally, but he seems like he's such a nice guy and just caring. And <laughs> She laughed on that. <clears throat> caring, she laughed. I like that. It's always the wives. You notice that? That's why I try to keep my wife in a different room. But if y'all would just be back tonight, shake Brother Bruner's hand, thank him for his work that he's done. If y'all would, I guess go ahead and stand.
Brother JT, will you pray and dismiss us, please?